Welcome to Reality Fighter TV. In today's video tutorial, I want to share and talk about an interesting topic that I think is very popular and very exciting to discuss. And that topic is the vertical fist or the horizontal fist punch or strike. Which one is better? Which one is faster? Which one is more powerful? This is a, a topic that I've seen lately on social media that's been getting a lot of uh, uh, a lot of energy towards and so I figured I'd, I'd talk about uh, what I feel about it and try to set aside uh, opinions and try to bring in the actual facts um, and the experience that I've had with it and that I use and really set aside kind of the differences between the two and the way I want to do this is I want to break them down break each punch down and talking about the the specific biomechanics that make each punch work their advantages and disadvantages of the biomechanics as well as the tactical options for each punch their advantages and disadvantages in other words where are they where do they work best and where uh, you know maybe not work as, as, as best so there's no one single answer to answer this question. In my opinion, this is like having a, a, a bunch of tools in a toolbox. Maybe I'm a, I'm a mechanic or I'm a, a carpenter. And you know, the, 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 each punch in here, the vertical and the horizontal, they are both uh, you know, straight you know, driving type punches in here that have to move out in a piston-like line. All right, and having, a, having um, a, a tool bag, let's say they have a tool bag full of a bunch of screwdrivers. Some screwdrivers are really long and skinny. Some are short and kind of fat in here. Some screwdrivers are you know, a flathead. Some are a Phillips head. The bottom line is that all screwdrivers work exactly the same. They have to work for a particular type of screw, okay? But in certain situations, you may not be able to use a long screwdriver. In other words, you're in a small, you know, a small confined area in here, so you're going to have to switch to the shorter tool of the same tool or the same concept. And that's the way I view both of these punches. In other words, both these punches are necessary and just as important if you are going to be at or to practice martial arts at a very high level whether you're sparring with it, or whether you're a professional fighter, or whether it's for a self-defense situation, both punches are equally important to really get a lot of experience and hopefully master. So before we go ahead and dive into this today's video tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, the little bell in the corner. Make sure you follow me on Instagram as well as Facebook, because there's a lot of content out there that I put out there for free in here that I think would be very helpful if you're new to my channel or maybe you're wanting to get more information on how to improve your martial arts training. So let's go ahead and get into this exciting topic, the vertical fist or the horizontal fish, which one is the better strike? Stay tuned. When it comes to defining the difference between the vertical fist and the horizontal fist position in terms of a punch, the first thing I like to start off with is talking about the natural characteristics of the human body as far as the, how the arms work in, in just in everyday life as well as how they apply to certain movements and sports. So I want to start with the biomechanics perspective first and then go from there. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think about in here is when you stand, when a person stands upright like this and when their arms hang down. Okay, most people's arms hang at their side like this with their, with their hands in this position. Most people's hands don't turn inward like this. Unless you have some serious shoulder dysfunctions, most people's arms are not pronated facing backwards like this, right? And they're certainly not this way, right? A lot of times they're somewhere in between in here for most, most positions in here like this. So this is the most natural, relaxed arm position when my hands are hanging, you know, assuming my arms aren't doing anything out here like this. This is the most natural position, right? Now, if I bring my arms up, or I bring my arm up to shake your hand, or to point in here, or to grab something in here, the most natural movement for me to grab something or shake your hand is to keep my arm in a vertical position like this, in this, in this fashion in here, and extending out at the tricep joint in here like this, okay, and just some extension on the lat, right? There's very little. Uh, medial head of the shoulder, uh, in the lateral portion of the sh of the shoulder in here, uh, going outward in here like this. My arm is not coming out and doing something like this. So, th so this is a very natural motion in here with both hands in here like this. If you were to do a, 
let's say a vertical push up in here or a knuckle push up in here like this or a bench press in this position, right? Or pick something up and carry it. You know, you're not usually carrying it like this in here. I go to pick up my kid. I go to un unrack plates off the barbell in here. I pick it up a lot of time, mostly like this, okay? So right away, uh, this position in here, this res resembles the vertical fist position, okay? So <laughs> there's very little shoulder action right, going on in here like this, and very minimal amount of, of uh, pectoral muscle coming involved in here like this, okay? So from a biomechanics perspective, right, this is a more natural position to do things out in this plane in here like this, okay? So if I were to bring my hand up into a fighting, you know, a guard stance in here like this, right, and I had my forearm down with my wrist, my fist vertical in here, and I delivered the action out like this. This is a very simple motion to do, very direct action in here that resembles shaking somebody's hand, right? Or pushing something in here like this, okay? Or maybe I did a little bit of finger jab. Okay, so that's one advantage right there of a delivering a vertical fist is it's very natural in, in this position as far as how the shoulder works, okay? Now, if, if I go to the horizontal punch in here, which I turn the fist, you know, palm down in here like this, and the, the, the radius bone, right, which is connected here, to, you know, into the elbow in here, right, that what happens, there's a muscle right here that, right, that turns the arm over here like this. It has to in here in order to create this pronated position in here. And now when I turn my arm over in here like this, right, what's, uh, what's in interesting about this this is very natural in here when the elbow has to kind of wing out a little bit, even a little bit, there's more shoulder involved. There's an arcing action going on in here. Okay, so even though this is a, 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 a you know, both punches are like moving in a piston-like line, like this in here, right? Moving straight in here like this, right? The horizontal punch has somewhat of an arc, right? It actually moves a little further away from the center of rotation, which would be, let's say, my spine, right here, if we drill the line, you know, right here, even a little bit in here. So even though this punch is coming out like this, and this one's going like this, the natural motion of this punch is a swimming action here, or throwing a ball, right? So this punch is moving along a different plane of motion. It's moving more on, on, on a transverse plane, and it's actually crossing the body in here when I rotate the, the palm forward like this. So there's more muscle contraction going on here, and I'm act actually using my, because I'm, because I'm rotating over, my pecs are bringing the arm more across the body like this. When it comes to the vertical punch, there's not so much of this. There's a little bit of rotation right here at the T-spine, right? But when I bring, when I arc this out a little bit in here, right, from a biomechanics perspective in here, this is more of a natural motion to create kind of a semi circular arcing motion, swimming, right, or throwing a ball. No one throws a ball like this and nobody swims like this. Or when people start losing their balance in here, they're, they usually have an arcing, flailing type motion going on in here, okay? So both those punches from a biomechanics perspective have their natural characteristics when it comes to everyday human movement, okay? I don't shake somebody's hand like this, but I do reach across my body to grab something over here sometimes. All right. So in fighting and stuff, because you have to, because in fighting is very dynamic, you have to deliver energy on this direction here. You have to deliver it over here. You have to deliver it downward, upward in here. Both of these techniques have their place, and are certainly both are very important in certain fighting situations. So that analogy in itself, right there, from a biomechanics perspective, right in here is important to understand because certain situations you're going to need to rotate over like this okay right whether your elbows come out like this sometimes it's going to have to happen and sometimes it's going to happen a little bit and sometimes it's going to happen across your body in here like this so you need to be able to have both so now that i've kind of addressed some of the biomechanics perspective let's go ahead and go in further here and talk about some of the uh, other characteristics that both punches have when it comes to applying them in everyday movement as well as in fighting, you know, combat tactical situations. Okay, so I just addressed some of the natural characteristics of the arm hand hanging position and I'm bringing them up 
into this plane here, into the sagittal plane in here like this, right? Going into, you know, arm, ex you know, <clears throat> starting to go into arm, you know, flexion, obviously going above her head. We're not talking about that, but starting to go into semi-flexion in here, right? I talked about some of the advantage, the you know, advantages in here and how the, how the, uh, how the uh, arm works as far as, you know, the shoulders and stuff. So with that being said, let's kind of continue a little further here. So the, one of the, the, the other things that happens I mean, from, a, from a biomechanics perspective in here, an anatomy perspective, let's go back to the vertical fist. The vertical fist in here, if I put my arm in this position in here like this, right, in here, let's say I bring my arm up, let's say I'm in my guard stance in here, I'm starting in my fighting stance, right? Assuming I've already picked my hands up. And I deliver this action straight out back like this, in here going forward in here, right? So from this angle in here, going out and back like this. This punch is moving in a straight line, right? As straight as I possibly can in here like this, out and back, right? So there's, there's very or no deviation of this technique. There, at least there should not be, okay? So this motion right here is what's called one step action, right? Once I'm in my guard stance in here, it goes out to the target and back. All right, out to the target and back, okay? So from the camera, bang, out and back, all right? So this is a very direct action in here like this, all right? And it's using a lot less muscle groups, like I explained earlier in here, all right? Now, if I hold my hands in the guard stance again, and let's say I do the horizontal punch, all right? What has to happen for the horizontal punch to even work is I have to take it from here, and I have to bring the forearm out like this a little bit. I have to rotate the, the radius in here, okay, connected to this elbow in here like this. I have to bring it here, and then I have to deliver that action to the target. So that right there takes two steps of action. I have to go from here to here to here. Now even, even if I just do this, let's say I keep the elbow down, because some people are gonna say that that's bad, tech, bad form, and I'll address that in here in a little bit. If I just turn the forearm over like this, okay, which that is very natural, right, as far as what we need to do with our arm in here for certain, for certain things. Even if I do this, one, two, that's still two actions doing this, all right? And this is very unnatural when it comes to doing things usually out in front of you when you have to move quickly in here, okay? But it is a very natural movement when the arm has to pronate for certain, for certain things. Maybe I am grabbing something here. Maybe I am throwing a punch, okay? But to explain this a little more in here, some of the advantages and disadvantages of these techniques is that this punch here, the vertical fist, is a one-step action motion. The horizontal punch is a two-step action. It has to be. Even the slightest degree, even if you turn it, you know, halfway and deliver it like this. You're still using more of the outer part of the shoulder in here, and you are creating a further distance from the center of your body. So there's more muscle contraction going on with this punch. So therefore, it's gonna expend more energy as opposed to this punch. Okay, one step action, two step action. Okay, if I delivered, my, if I delivered it from the rear hand in here like this, if I get the elbow out, that's two steps of action. If I do it like from a, what a boxer would say about trying to keep the elbows in, in here like this, I do something like this, this is still two steps of action in here if you break it down. I have to get to here and then fire. Or it is delivered from here. Okay, so vertical fist, horizontal fist, one is gonna be faster and one is gonna be slower. Now, some of the other advantages and disadvantages are going to be when it comes to talking about power. So let's go ahead and talk about, get into some of the anatomy about that and go into the tactical options about both those strikes. Okay, now that I've addressed the biomechanics perspective and I've addressed the speed analogy in here, let's go ahead and talk about the power analogy and, the, you know, and how power plays a role in both these two punches, right? It's actually pretty simple in here, right? So if I took this stick in here, imagine I'm swinging a baseball bat in here, right? So if you think about baseball in here, right, or centrifugal force, right, anything, any kind of uh, object in here that's arcing away from the body, 
right? And you're using the body as rotation, right? So this punch in here, right, has a, has a rotational factor coming across here, more rotation. Because as the elbow gets further and further away from the body, whether you choose to deliver that or not, even if it's a little bit, you've just created more distance from your, from your elbow to the center of rotation, which is your spine. So that's the same thing as like bunting a baseball, okay? So I have a little bit of rotation, or I can bring it out here and have bigger rotation. It's the same concept in here, right? So the horizontal punch is going to have more power because it's, start, it's starting from the point of conception from a bigger distance. And it has more time to pick up momentum in here, more velocity, okay? And as you're, at the, depending upon, you know, depending upon your, you know, experience and how you position your body, that could play a role with it too. But if you're talking about the arm attached to the, to the, the upper part of the, the torso in here, this punch is always going to be more powerful, right? So that's the advantage of it is it's got power in here, okay? Just like throwing a ball. You're going to throw a ball a lot further like this then you are gonna to try to throw it from here. Try throwing a football from here. Look at any football player, any baseball player, right? Everything has an arcing motion to it like this, all moving on this transverse plane in here like this. And the arm has to pronate, right? And pull the shoulder and the humerus bone, rotating it forward like this to create this snapping action like that, okay? So this, the horizontal punch is always gonna have more power in here. But, however, it's always like the baseball bat, you're going to see it more, okay? So the disadvantage of these techniques, of some of these punches in here, is the vertical fist in here is, like I said earlier, it's one step action. So it has less telegraphing. The more the arm has to move from the out, you know, away from the body mass first in here, right? Like a hook, okay? Or bringing an elbow, right? Or bringing a roundhouse kick in here. Anytime that you arc the, the, the limb away from the body more, it's more visible. If you think about it, if I took this stick and I lined it up with the camera in here and you're looking at, the, looking at it right down in here, it's harder to judge the length of this than it is if I turned it on its side like this. You can see the entire face of this in here, but when I put it here, it's hard, harder to judge the distance. The most of what you see mostly is what? The tip. Okay, and that's the same thing punching vertical like this. Okay, so when I keep the arm elbow down, it's traveling on a different line of force. Okay, a different line of power in here, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. The horizontal punch is coming outside the body mass and it's traveling on a similar but different line of force, okay? So this is gonna be more visible because you have to get the elbow out a little bit. Even if you, you know, just a little bit, He's a good martial artist or a good, good fighter is gonna see the slightest little telegraph in here. So this goes like this a little bit, right? And if you throw a proper rear cross in here where the body has to angle off a little bit to, to get the, the body, to, to brace the body for impact and torque torque across the body, that's why it's called a cross, because it crosses the center line in here, right? That's more telegraphic than it would be to deliver the punch in a vertical fashion, right, like this. So one of the advantages and disadvantages is gonna be one is faster initially, and one is more powerful, you know, uh, initially. And there's some other features I'm gonna go ahead and share with you. So let's go ahead and talk about what I mean by what is called the line of force. And I've mentioned some other, I have some other videos that go into detail about the line of force, but I'll go ahead and address it again and explain it maybe in a different way so you can have a better understanding of, so you can strip away the opinions out of, the, out of, this, out of this tutorial and get into the actual facts. So let's go ahead and talk about the line of force. Okay, let's go ahead and define what the line of force principle is. The definition of the line of force is the specific functional trajectory or path that you want either one of these strikes to take. Okay, talking about 
the vertical fist or the horizontal fist. But any, any strike, realistically, has to follow the proper line of force or the proper line of drive or power if you're going to maximize the musculature in your body irregardless of the range of motion. So it's no different than, than weightlifting. Okay, if you think about bench pressing, right, or doing or push-ups in here, right? <clears throat> if you take a bench press and take your one rep max, whatever that is, it doesn't matter how much you weigh, it doesn't matter if you can bench press 50 pounds or 500 pounds, and you get your body in the proper position on the bench, and you place your hands on the bar, wherever that is, and you can do that one rep max, no problem, okay? And then let's say that you rack the weight and then you take your hands and move them in really close and then try to do the exact same thing, you're probably gonna have that weight just drop on you. Why? Because you don't have the skeletal muscular structure in the line of drive from the point of, of lowering it to the point of, of driving it back out. So from the point of the eccentric to the concentric motion, you don't have your skeletal muscular structure all in the right spot. So what happens is, is that your joints right, start to take the energy and something starts to give instead of your whole body being able to resist that force. So every, for every, every action, right, there's an equal opposite reaction. So <clears throat> this is the same thing when it comes to striking. So to determine you know, what, how, you know, how to deliver the technique on the most efficient path based on the, the position you're in, you have to find the proper line of force. So there's one best line of force or line of drive for each one of these punches to take. There's not, and there's some variations on them, but there's one best way, like there's one best position for your arms to be to maximize your bench press or to do a push-up, okay? So what, think about doing knuckle push-ups, right? You do vertical fist push-ups in here, right? If you try to you know, put your hands like this or something in here and try to do a push-up here, you're probably not gonna do very many, okay? Because, you're, because your, your kinetic chain in here, right? From, the, from your knuckles all the way to your shoulders in here are just not in a you know, structurally strong position from the point of conception to this destination. So the line of force, we'll take this stick again to kind of illustrate is let's take the vertical punch first in here, right? So for force to be correct, energy has to come off your shoulders, right? Your shoulders and your triceps and even degree of your back muscles are, you know, a lot of have to do with driving weight in here so much, right? pushing weight in here, pushing energy out in here, okay? So if you were to, you know, let's say I'm in a, a guard stance here, I assume I have my hands up, let's take the vertical punch in here. For this punch to be, to maximize its leverage in here, not necessarily at speed right now, but to maximize this mechanical power in here so I can brace against energy in here and don't break my hand in here, is we're gonna take this stick and we're gonna put it right on the interior portion of the shoulder in here and we're gonna point it kind of, I'm just gonna stick it right here to brace in here while I'm talking to you. But the line of force for this punch, for this vertical punch, is right here, okay? In other words, I want my forearm on that line immediately, the moment I deliver the action. I don't want it down here, I want it right here. That way, when I deliver this technique, my forearm and bicep, humerus bone in here, is gonna come into a, you know, a good straight line, straight line quicker than it would be if I were to deliver the punch from here and create a swatting action. So I have a very good, strong, pushing, driving leverage oriented punch, even if it's a palm strike, right here, like this, right in here, hitting flat, okay? So this is the proper line of force for this punch. So if I look at the camera in here, it's right off my shoulders. You can't get power, the same kind of power, if you're punching from the center of your body. So if your fist is on the center like this, but you're, you know, and here's 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 the line of here's the line of uh, driving here again. If your fist is here, but your form is like this, again, try doing push-ups or bench pressing from right here. You're not going to be able to do nearly as what you could do when your arms are right here like this. So that's a really good way to test it. Do push-ups from here, like diamond push-ups, or in close like this, or do co close grip bench presses in here. It's kind of like doing a skull crusher. You're relying completely on elbow extension only, and and no 
shoulder motion and no lat extension going out in here like this. No shoulder or lat extension going out in here. So this would be the line of force for this vertical punch in here like this. Okay, and the same thing would be, doesn't matter if it's coming off whatever side of the body, it doesn't matter, lead or rear side in here. Okay, so wherever the target is, if I point the target, if the target's down here, now the line of force is this way. If the part target's up here, the line of force is up here. So if I put my arm like this, technically if I were to press a dumbbell, all right, or push, technically this is where the punch should be going. But you want your punch going straight. So what happens is, is people will swat here, they get to here, then they get on a line of force. So they're not on a very good line of force until three quarters of the end of the technique. Okay, or their arm is down like this, right? They got their arm down here and they bring their arm up here, right? Not only are you not, you've lost about 16 inches of drive, but you've telegraphed your actions. One, two, or I'm up here, one, two. Okay, so from here, right, I'm up here, drop and fire, that's two actions. Down here, that's two actions, okay? Or try to turn my fist over in here like this. This is not the same line of force, okay? So again, line of force is the functional trajectory, that a specific path to maximize leverage for this intended strike to take in here like this. This is why ultimately it's superior as far as speed compared to the horizontal punch because it doesn't just come flying out right here like this, right? It doesn't do any winging out you're right in here. It's just loaded like a gun. Boom! It just comes flying out. So for initial speed, it's very superior to the horizontal punch. If I'm delivering a tech, you know, delivering this action coming from here, very simple, right, and very direct. Okay. So this is a very economical, economized motion of a of a straight punch in here using the vertical fist, or some you know people call it a straight punch, like in Wing Chun or JKD or a jab in boxing in here. Okay, so that's a, that is how to explain, that's explaining the line of force for the vertical punch. Let's go ahead and explain the line of force for the horizontal punch. Okay, the line of force for the horizontal punch is gonna be slightly different. But ultimately, again, the line of force, like I said earlier, is the specific functional trajectory for each strike to travel on to maximize the mechanical leverage from the point of conception to the, com to the point of its destination. So with the horizontal punch, I explained earlier that in order for this to work, you have to, you have to pronate the arm out and you have to bring the shoulder out like this because you're taking advantage of more torque. You're taking advantage of this space in here like this, right? Just like swinging a baseball bat. You can't have more torque if your elbow stays down like this, okay? So the line of force for this technique is not coming here now, Right? It's not coming here, right? So if I, if, let's say if I got here again, line of force has to start from the, from the shoulders where that ties into the pecs in here, right? <clears throat> if I bring my arm out like this, okay, now the line of force is here. So now the punch has this arcing action here first, all right? And then it travels again down the path of this stick. Okay, so if you look at it from here, putting it on the bobbin here, I have to bring it out and the line of force is here. Okay, bang. Now depending upon the angle, the sharpness of the angle or the distance you in, that line of force may change. So technically, if I were to put it in the center of my chest, right, I have to punch, I have to make an X somewhere along this line in here, like this. I'm just using this as the reference point, right? To travel a straight line. So it's not traveling here. It's not traveling from the center of my body. See, that would be a, an accordion-like motion in here like this, okay? Which is what a lot of people will do. Their hands are like here, and they bring the elbow out a little bit, and the fist is on the center, and technically the form of the fist is pointed, pointed in that direction. So they go like this, and then snap to the center. But technically, for force to be correct when they're here, the punch should be going over here. So this is why you have to be able to, if I hold this up here like this, I have to be able to punch along 
this line here, and I have to be able to punch, let me shorten this up, port, punch across this way, and then even in closer, I have to punch along this way. Okay, so there's a couple different advantages here with this horizontal punch is I can create different angles still traveling, okay, in a straight piston-like line in here, like this. As opposed to this punch, I can still do that, okay, but I don't get this shoulder, the inward rotation of the shoulder again to create that arc, to create that, that extra torque in here. Okay, so again, to reiterate, the horizontal punch, the line of force is coming, is, is when I bring the arm out, the line of force is here now, traveling to the target. And even if I step in closer, okay, here, bang. So let's put this down, right? So I'm here, I gotta bring it up, bang, to the target. I move it six inches closer in here, well, now I'm not punching from here because I'm all jammed up. I have to change the angle in here and it's still going straight. It's not a squatting action. If I'm in real close like this, okay, then I'm gonna throw a right angle horizontal punch of this, right? Deliver it this direction, coming across here like so. So there's a lot of advantages to this horizontal punch when it comes to angles, right? In, in, in tactical situations than the vertical fist. All right, so that's a definition of the line of force in terms of where it would be for a horizontal strike. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about some of the tactical advantages that you may or may, may have to use when it comes to applying the horizontal versus the vertical fist. So let's take a look at that. Okay, the next thing I want to address with both of these punches is the, the fist position on an impact. Now there's some, a lot of different ideas about, about this, but Realistically, we have to go, I want to go back and use from a biomechanics perspective and an anatomy perspective, okay? So, uh, you know, keep in mind, you know, anybody can do anything, right? You know, whether they throw a horizontal or vertical, I mean, as long as they hit you with the, with the, with the if, as long as it's effective, it really doesn't matter. But when you're talking about the nitty gritty, it's like, you know, what's more efficient and what's not efficient, what works with this situation, what's with that, you have to take in everything. You have to take in, you know, the physics behind things, uh, what's happening to you, the environment, the conditions you're applying it, right? You know, is this, is, are you talking about for boxing? Are you talking about for street? Are you talking about for MMA? Because all those different dynamics play a role, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and address some of those. Now, some people talk about, you know, when hitting, you know, making contact with the target in here with a vertical fist is to hit with three knuckles as opposed to hitting with two knuckles with a horizontal fist, all right? Now, really, in reality, you have to think of what you're hitting that's gonna determine which one of those you're gonna do. And at the same time, you have to take into account the speed of what's happening. Right? So, you know, people don't take into account that they're hitting somebody in the cranium as opposed to hitting, a, you know, hitting a, hitting a punching bag. Or they don't take into account that they're talking about uh, hitting with two knuckles on a horizontal, right? The first two knuckles here, the index and the middle finger here, hitting horizontal like this, but they're doing it with, with gloves on and hand wraps. So as long as you have you know, padding on your hands, hand wraps, and then 10 yards of gauze and tape, and you formed a cast, you can literally hit in any direction, angle, and really not have a problem. But you take the gloves off, and everything changes. So you have to follow it from a biomechanics perspective, first and foremost, to protect your hand. Otherwise, your hand's gonna shatter on impact, right? So if somebody's cranium has got sharp bone sticking out, Right, as opposed to hitting a flat wall or hitting a focus mitt or hitting a heavy bag, gloves or no gloves, it changes things. Okay, so using this, using the bob dummy here as kind of an illustration for anatomy, all right, you got to take into account that you're not always going to be at the optimum apex of the punch for any one of these punches when you hit. 
Okay, because people rush in, they duck their head, you mistime it, you slip fall. You gotta take in those things into account. People don't take in the worst case scenario uh, you know, directive into account. They're always assuming best case scenario, I'm gonna punch and hit right out here, right out here, or he's not gonna move, right? And so as long as you know you can set that whole situation up like that, you can hit any way you want, right? But that's not what I'm talking about here. So you basically <laughs> You want to hit with both punches as flat as you possibly can. I want to stamp my name, irregardless if I'm hitting into the orbital socket, hitting into the you know the cheekbone, the jaw, right, uh, hitting into the temple in here, right, um, hitting you know into the throat, right, into the into the you know the chest sternum area. I want to hit as flat as I possibly can. I was like, I want these three metal carpal bones, right, impacting. I want my forearm to drive in like a dagger as much as I possibly can. So the theory about uh, hitting with three knuckles on a vertical fist is technically correct because that is the majority of the fist that you're going to be able to, to, you know, to stamp, you know, to stamp in here like so, right? And again, you got to take into account that a person may's head may not be there, you know. If you think, you know, you're going to hit here and he ducks his head down and you hit here, you know, there's a good chance that you, you know, you could hurt your hand, particularly if you're hitting a bare fist or MMA gloves on. You know, boxing gloves, not such a big deal. But if you're taking a horizontal fist and you're trying to aim these two knuckles only, the problem with that is, first and foremost, you're never going to do that uh, perfectly every time. Right? No fighter ever is going to last 12 rounds or however many rounds you're sparring or fighting and hitting perfectly like that. And again, with gloves, it doesn't matter. Right? And if, even if you did hit like that, the problem with doing that is a lot of times you're, never, you're not going to get your wrist perfectly straight. Well, depending upon the articulation of your wrist, you, you may. But that is a huge demand on a person's timing. When they're under duress and you know the fear of survival is you know kicking in and in gross motor skills are taking over for finite motor skills, right? Most fight, fighters are throwing wild haymakers after you know 30 seconds because they're so under duress, right? So just the fact to try to keep both one of these two punches in a straight line, that takes a lot of training. And now you're asking to emphasize to hit with the, just a small part of the knuckles. That's, that's incorrect, right? You're going to have more, more damage over greater surface area if you hit flat. And you're going to protect your hand a lot more if you hit as flat as you possibly can with either, with either hand. The problem with the horizontal punch, particularly because it's more complex to try to keep your elbow down and do this, most people, when they do punch with that technique, is they end up hitting at with the you know hitting with the knuckles here, and then the, the wrist is below the knuckles, and the elbows are below that. And what happens is a lot of times they don't time it just right, and then they get what's called force leakage. You got to think. Remember again, for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. So to try to time two knuckles, it's bad enough to hit bent like this as opposed to, you know, getting it up in here like this. You want to get this thing up as, as parallel to the floor as you can, so you hit with these top knuckles, okay, here, and not hitting like this. Again, with boxing gloves, it may not make a big difference in here, but that's still poor, that's still poor accuracy in here. You want to try to get hit as flat as you possibly can like this, okay? So, you know, even if I were to hit downward in here, right, to try to focus my two knuckles, I mean, my, I'm going to, I'm going to fracture, there's a good chance I'm going to fracture these two joints in here if my wrist tweaks on impact like this in here. There's a very good chance I'm going to do that and when I misjump and I hit somebody in the, in the cranium in here. Like, go hit a bowling ball and tell me how that feels. Right? I might be able to do it on a wall, a flat surface because the, the, the environment's not moving, but no way is it going to happen in reality. So for the people who talk about that, that's, that's bullshit, all right? So you want to hit as flat as you possibly can, especially, especially if you're you know, hitting with a bare fist or you know, a very, very small glove like a four ounce you know, MMA glove in here, 
right? And you want to when you deliver when you when you make contact in here. I mean, the idea is to get the forearm and the wrist all jammed into the target like this. So when you make contact, your wrist doesn't roll, you know, all like this, right? So if you don't, you know, sometimes people like I've had this happen, in, you know, a long time ago where I didn't quite make a good fist in here because I kind of relied on the on the hand wrap, you know, like you see when you make, you know, when you wrap your hands, you kind of make that bar underneath to hold on to. Right, or some of those small uh, four ounce uh, MMA gloves or boxing MMA gloves kind of have that plastic tubing that's like a bar. Well, that's a false sense of making a fist because when you take that out, you gotta close your hand more. So you get used to contracting your hand right to here or maybe you don't quite make a, you know, squeeze your fist on impact and you make contact in here and then the glove, you know, the glove kind of absorbs the impact but your wrist rolls like this in here, right? And that's just on a heavy bag like that. Right? Fighters already alone in MMA break their hands when their hands are taped up in those gloves because they're, when they throw punches and stuff, a lot of times, most of the time, you know, they're hitting, you know, they're hitting like this with hook punches, right? Hitting with the thumb joint in here like that, or, right? or they're swatting type of punches. So, you know, that's what the gauze is supposed to do is, is meant to kind of keep those metal carpal bones like in a nice solid cast because they're going to spread on impact. Okay, so the rule is is to hit as flat as, right, as, as you possibly can and really work on the accuracy of this so you don't shatter, you know, to get a stress fracture, you know, in the first, you know, in, in the first, uh, you know, two finger, you know, joints in here like this. Okay, so the hand wraps and stuff are meant to protect the hands, uh, your hands, not the other guy. All right, so vertical fist or horizontal fist, you want to hit as flat as you possibly can. You got to take into account when you're under duress, timing is an issue, right? Power and speed are important, but the accuracy is final. So what separates out, you know, from somebody dropping from one punch in here is, is being accurate. I can have all the speed and power if I want, you know, but if I kind of glance off, right, in here, not only, you know, over time, over rounds in here, I may, you know, I may start tearing up my knuckles, Right? Or I'm going to miss it here and not have the effect, of, effect that I want. So you have to be effective with both punches. Right? You have to understand the anatomy of the arms in here, how that works. And you have to understand the anatomy of the physics in here of the, of the line of, of, the line of uh, power that you're trying to take in here. Right? The, the line of force is what I was talking about earlier. Okay? So let's go ahead and go on to the next topic which I want to talk about is how does that how do these both these structures the strikes apply in tactical situations their advantages and disadvantages so let's go ahead and take a look at that all right the final thing I want to discuss with you is some of the tactical options that both these strikes play a role in into into high levels of sparring or high levels of fighting so <clears throat> tactical options or tactical scenarios mean specific certain scenarios where you may need to, you know, change change the, the weapon in here, right? It's like again, it's like the screw the tool uh, box analogy. You may have to. I need a screwdriver, but I need a one that says short, not this one long, because I'm in a very tight space or something like that. So let's go back to the vertical punch. So the biggest asset that the vertical fist offers in here is speed, initial speed, very quick, uh, direct action right to the target and back okay assuming I'm facing my adversary forward in here like this right in front of me my hands are up the vertical fist is always going to be superior as far as speed to the initial action in here to the target and back okay there's no argument about that it's always going to be quicker because it's one step action here like this and it's much harder to see when I can get the forearm and fist more aligned you know with the the opponent's eyesight if I can, if I can line it up with his vision and distort his perception as it's coming at him in here. I can't quite do that as well as I want to bring this elbow out a little bit like this, okay? So initial speed and directness is the biggest asset out of the vertical fist, all right? The other reason why I might choose a vertical fist, again, because of its natural characteristics of the arm in here like this. Again, it kind of goes back to speed. Right? So even if my hands are down, 
right? Let's say my hands are down, this is a self-defense situation, or my hands are somewhere here, they're not in a guard stance. A lot of times in here, when I have to deliver a quick action here, a sudden action, even if it's a palm strike, right? Boom, in here like this, right? Or a quick finger jab. A lot of times the elbow down concept in here, using less muscles, is gonna be a quicker action to the target. So basically, the vertical fist, vertical fist position is a speed asset in here, okay? And under duress, a lot of times, right, it's, I don't have to commit that much, right? So I don't have to, you know, when I have to, again, when I have to bring my arm out like this a little bit or twist my body into a position, the more I have to torque the body along this line in here like this, right? Even if I, you know, like a hook, right, or a round kick in here, the more I gotta, you know, twist the body to deliver an action, the more muscles I'm gonna use, it requires more endurance, more strength, and the more positional liabilities I could find myself in, all right? Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages of the vertical fist in here. The disadvantage, one of the primary disadvantages of the vertical fist, it often doesn't happen too much, but it can happen from operator error, is that when you deliver the punch out here like this, your outside upper gate line here of your head, like your temple jaw area, is more open to being countered, more successful to being countered if somebody were to be swinging an overhand or something at the same time. So you have to be, you, have to, you consciously have to be aware of that, right? So when I, even if I deliver the perfect the punch in the line of force, there's still some space. Even if I bring my chin down like I'm supposed to in here, there's still some space that I, he could take advantage of. So unless I anticipate, I have to anticipate that. So unless I bring my hand over here, which in some cases is not a good idea, right? Or I really bring my head down in this action throw more of a, what's called a protected strike and anticipate it and take it on the top of the head as opposed to taking it right in the eye socket or the temple, there's a little bit of a gap right here like this when it comes to delivering this vertical fist, okay? So that's pretty much the primary disadvantage of that technique. I can't really, really can come across, and I've been using this for two, over 20 years, and it's, I've had a lot of success with it, and it's just, it's a primary, it's a primary, you know, jabbing technique for me uh, when, I, when I need speed in here. And I say, if somebody can't stop it in sparring, there's no reason to switch to this. Uh, unless I'm, you know, practicing, you know, following up with a rear, uh, a more powerful punch or something, or hitting on angles. So speed, and you know, uh, again, uh, you know, the disadvantages of, of the vertical fist is maybe you're a little more open in here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other, let's talk about the horizontal punch. The horizontal punch has a lot of advantages in hitting on uh, with more power and hitting with angles. Okay, and then also putting putting the punches together in uh, in uh, in combination here because of the of the setting up you know of the twisting of the body in here and setting up for other techniques right. So uh, I may uh, start with a vertical punch to initiate the speed right. The theory is lead with speed, follow with power, and I get the first one in here really quick and I stun the guy, and then I get my body in a position here where I torque the body. Wham! Into this rear, into this horizontal punch, and the rear, what I call the rear cross in here. Okay, so I'm leading with speed, and then I'm positioning myself to torque into a harder punch. Now from here, okay, I can choose to, as I chamber it back, I can choose to bring this arm out and then throw a what it's called a lead cross, all right, in here. So I'm throwing the same punch off the lead side of my body if I'm a southpaw, right? If I started here, right, vertical fist in, right right rear cross, right, then a left lead cross in here, and I can start chaining what's called a escalating swarm or a combat swarm and start putting these punches in rapid fire in here and start increasing the power. So it's more natural once you start to chain techniques together is to start fading into crosses. So you start vertical, there's only so much power I can get by going back and forth like this. So if I got the guy hit and I'm overwhelming the person with like a machine gun style type of punching and he hasn't dropped yet, right, I don't want to just keep trying to hit him like a speed bag. So I may start switching, you know, into these cross punches in here and when I, as, I, as I shift my body into a position here with a cross, I can choose to either throw another horizontal punch cross or I can start channeling, you know, into hooks in here like this. But the bottom line is your body comes across like this to throw this horizontal technique it's in position in here uh, to, you know, to torque this way for a, a hook 
right, or a torque for a round kick, or you know, or, or torque for an elbow, right, or a torque for an uppercut. So it has its major advantages of, 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 of linking other punches together. The horizontal punch also has a major advantage of throwing in protection, right? So if I feel I'm going to get countered, what I can do is, is I, if I bring my elbow to the outside of my body, which is you should, and that's what it's really for, is to do this, I don't care about the telegraphing right now. I need the telegraphing because I need to get this thing in here because he's hitting me at the same time. So if I got, I got a guy trading in here, I need to peg him anyway. I need to drop my head in this pocket and take the punch up here. As opposed to the vertical fist, I can't do that quite as easily. So protection is a huge advantage right, of delivering the horizontal fist. The other, again, we've explained other advantage of it is power. Right? There's a bigger arc delivered to the target here. Angles is another one. Right? If somebody jumps me from over here, right? let's say they tackle me while coming out of this side in here, it's going to make more sense biomechanically right, to torque my body, bam, and hit it in this direction and deliver it downward in here. Now I can deliver a vertical fist, but it's more natural and, more, and easier on my body in this tactical position to torque the body over, to inwardly rotate the bot shoulder and hit on this line, as long as I'm hitting in the proper line of force. Okay, if somebody's coming over here like this, I can punch this way, but if I open up my body more, wham, I can hit harder and hit more efficiently and face my adversary directly, quickly in this initial action. Okay, if I'm punching upward, I got a taller opponent. I definitely can throw a vertical fist, but I can get more reach in here by delivering a horizontal technique in here like this, assuming you know, somebody's an abnormal size. Okay, so again, to reiterate, both punches have their advantages and disadvantages biomechanically and have their advantages and disadvantages in tactical options. So if you want to become very efficient in your martial arts skill or system or style you study, you need to practice both. You, if you just pick one over the other, you're going to find it's and you're not going to be able to do certain, you know, certain, you know, things that you'd like to do, right? Punching on the ground is another one, right? The cross punches, horizontal punches work better to really ground and pounce. I can torque into the body. I can deliver vertical punches, but I really want to start laying into them and hitting on angles in here, like we talked about earlier. Bang, you know, this way, this way, straight down, right? This technique works a little better as far as biomechanically and from a physics perspective. So I hope you found this information informative. Again, if you, if you did, please give this video a like, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, share this channel and this video with your friends who you think you know, someone might benefit from it, and keep on the lookout for my next tutorial. I know I haven't done any in a while, I've been very busy with other projects, but I am gonna get back into, into giving you more, you know, more content in, uh, during this year of 2020. So again, thank you for watching. I'm Rich Alton. Take care and Happy New Year.